God, this is awful. <laughs> oh, we're up. Just we're live. Up. We are live. And can you see us? Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. Um, we've been live for about 30 seconds and had no idea. Welcome to this live stream. We're using new software. This is what happens sometimes. Um, I'm Brittany from AJ and Smart. Thanks so much for joining us. We are going to do kind of a special thing today. We're going to actually look into a few of our favorite apps. Um, and I have senior product designers with me, and we're gonna kind of critique them. You know, we're gonna talk about what we like about them, what we don't like about them, what we think they should do next, what they definitely shouldn't do, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna be fabulous. So I have Dee here. Hi. Dee is a product designer extraordinaire. She is, uh, does all of our trainings. She trains people around the world on design sprints and innovation stuff. So a very, Big brain. <laughs> you wouldn't I'm know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that I said that, but it's true. Um, and then we also have Tim here. And Tim, Hi everyone. yeah, Tim is a product design director. So he is running sprints with some of the biggest companies in the world. Um, so he's seen his fair share of products. So before we ju uh, dive in, guys, I would love to ask you a couple of questions. So, firstly, how many apps do you guys both use on a daily basis? Or how many digital products, I should say? Should I go first? Yeah, yeah, um, sure. It's good. not a lot, to be honest. I mean, um, I try to turn my phone to this uh, distraction-free iPhone mm, thing that yeah. uh, Jake Knapp came up with. And I mean, the, the number of apps I use every day, it's probably, I can probably count them on one hand. Like, it's probably not more than four, I would say. Yeah. Um, however, that changes when a sprint is coming up. That when I have to do research on, on products, I usually like download a lot of stuff and just like try it out. Yeah. So then like at the end of the sprint, usually I get rid of it. But sometimes some stuff actually sticks and I keep using it. Cool. Um, yeah, but, uh, but like on a day to day four. basis, maybe it's like three to four. That I is not say. very many. Yeah. D? That is, I, mine's many more. <laughs> but I think I'm actually also really maybe compared to the average using not so many apps. But then you've, if you've got an iPhone, you've got this app called Screen Time where you can actually just see all the apps that you've opened. And I'm like, yeah, me too. But then I'm like, wait, I check the um, weather in the morning. I maybe used my public transport app to get a ticket to come to work. Or maybe I used, I can yeah. see my scooter sharing app that I use. Um, I use Google Maps. I use Foursquare. I use uh, Facebook to check an event this morning that someone invited me to. WhatsApp for messages. Facebook Messenger for messages. So actually... I thought I was, and Slack, of course, like for work like conversations. 15? Yeah, so it must be something like 15, yeah. 20 altogether. That's a lot, actually. And my sleep timer as well that I check in the morning, my sleep tracker. So this yep. is really interesting because I think you're on the heavy side. My of... alarm clock when I turned it off in the morning <laughs> was using an app. Yeah, That's true, yeah. But Tim's on the lighter side. So this will be interesting if you guys have different perspectives on what you like look for in a, in a product. Um, would you consider yourselves early adopters? Hmm. It deep, I, I, I think I, I'm pretty informed on things that happen, but I am usually pretty hesitant to try out new stuff just for the sake of it. It's, uh, yeah. it's a big commitment, I think. Like very often you just need to invest time to get into something new. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, just by the nature of having to do research for sprints, I would say I have to, I have to be aware of new products coming out. And I find them interesting. It's just that my interest pretty much stops after I've learned what I needed to learn yeah. uh, and then I kind of like get rid of it. Mm. Makes so, sense. Yeah. yeah. And I think I don't have a really broad like, oh my gosh, I have to try everything new. But as soon as something's new, like I'm thinking two years ago, there was a new scooter sharing oh, service yeah. in Berlin. Yeah. I was like right in there. Like, you jumped on We're it. in the beta yeah. version. Yeah. And then also this car share sounds like I just drive everywhere all the time. <laughs> this, oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this new... Car sharing where you can share other people's cars when on the weekends when they don't use it. Oh, it's wow. really good. So I tried that and mm. that was also just in that first. So as soon as I hear yeah. something that's brand new, like that I want to use, I'm just straight in there. Okay, cool. And then really quickly, how do you actually discover new products? Are you actively looking for them or mm. do you hear about them from people or on websites or? People. I hear about things. People. Yeah. I'm not browsing. Yeah. Often people in the, the office internet actually. all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Our yeah. office is, yeah. We're always Our uh, product designer, Fedor, always knows the coolest new yeah. apps for some reason. Does, I don't know yeah. how he yeah. does it, but he uh, he's always, uh, like he's the first to know uh, yeah. when something cool happens. So Fedor, basically. That's true. Fedor That's true. and uh, probably like tech news the Verge or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Fedor and The Verge. The Verge. Yeah. <laughs> or through Tim, through The Verge. Yeah, That's exactly. <laughs> That's well, how it gets exactly. to yeah. me. 
Okay, yeah. cool. All right, so let's dive in then. We're gonna actually look at some of Tim's favorite um, apps and some of Dee's favorite apps and kind of just talk through them. Mm -hmm. And feel free to ask any questions you might have um, or comment on some things. If you're like, hey, there's a way better app, you should try this one, yeah. whatever, let us know. Yeah. Um, so what's your first app, Dee? Okay, Tell us. so I've got some stuff to show. I'm picking up the phone. Um, I, I tried, there were lots of things. I tried to think of ones that I use all the time and really like, but there's also super annoying things yeah. <laughs> that I want to kind of talk about. So I'm going to start with Google Maps. Everyone, well, at least I, most people, I think, use Google Maps all the for time, sure. some yeah. kind of map, to get around to find places for sure. But there was this particular thing that I think they don't do very well and I wanted to talk about, mm -hmm. which is this kind of explore <clears throat> thing. And especially if we look at, say, just um, restaurants, um, and then you get, okay, you've got some like recommendations nearby, you, you see ratings and stuff there, but on this map view is what I really want to see. Like, usually I'm on the street and someone's like, oh, let's go get some food, or hey, do you know a good cafe nearby? Mm. Yeah. And I want to see on the map where things are. So this now isn't actually telling me so much. In fact, I know, this is where we are right now on this map, I know there's a bunch of restaurants. In between all Really good ones. Like, aren't on here mm. there's umami there's the past there's all these places that aren't coming up why not i don't know also it's not actually giving me any information it's just saying red dot restaurant here yeah. not mm. what yeah. kind of food it is or yeah. the rating like you're a robot mm. and it's just yeah. like food here yeah 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 <laughs> food now <laughs> doesn't matter what it is so then in comparison i want to go to foursquare which i use all the time and i'm always this is really, I'm curious, yeah. like, first of all, Tim, do you oh, use yeah. Foursquare? I used to, yeah. I you used to, I think that's most I people. I stopped <laughs> using it a couple of years ago when they made that big split where they um, suddenly oh, yeah. had two apps, one, Swarm. I think, yeah, Swarm yeah. And, and Foursquare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just didn't want to have like two apps for basically the yeah. same thing. So yeah. that I, I, I kind of like stopped using it. But I, I, I actually agree that the stuff, like sometimes when I'm going to a new place, like yeah. traveling for work or something, I actually download Foursquare again just yeah. because I know that the recommendations on Foursquare are actually way more um, interesting and relevant to yeah. you than yeah. the stuff on Google Maps. You don't want to waste your time just yeah. trying to walk by a place and, oh, yeah. it's not that good, but now I've wasted my one mm. evening. But people and, always, yeah. like Dee and I were talking, people yeah. always make fun of us for yeah. using Foursquare. I would be so curious if you guys want to say in the comments, do you use Foursquare? Yeah. Um, or yeah. do you actively hate it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I love it because literally... <laughs> Just like this, I can say mm. I want to have lunch near me, and I've got very clear, ordered list showing mm. with the coloring, also showing me what are the most interesting places that I should look at first, as opposed to Google Maps, yeah. which has far fewer. I don't know why, um, and uh, and there's no mm. there's no information about which one might be the best one to look at first. Yeah. So with Google Maps, I literally have to like. Tap here and look at this one, and tap here and look at this one, and tap mm. here and look at this one. And then with Foursquare, I can just easily say, oh, well, look, that's number one, and it's mm. right next to me, so I'm going to check that one out. Yeah. And, oh, no, thanks. Um, and then I can see all these other ones. So this was a really big point. I just want to look at my notes now to check if there was something else that I really wanted to say. I think you it's, want to say something Yeah, too? I think yeah. it's interesting that... For a company like Google that wants to, you know, like organize all the knowledge in the world to, to actually do a pretty bad job compared to Foursquare just on that alone yeah. is interesting because, yeah. I mean, there's probably stuff that I would never go to Foursquare to that Google is really excellent at. It's just that just because Foursquare is so focused on doing one thing really, yeah. really, really well and they're only doing that thing. Um, they they actually can compete against Google, yeah. and uh, I think that's pretty pretty interesting. This is the other point I wanted to make was that at the Google the big Google conference, yeah. Google I/O just recently, they announced this new thing where Google Lens, which is this kind of AI part of Google Maps, I think. I hope I got that right. That um, they have this new feature where you can mm. be in a restaurant and you can kind of just scan or just mm. hold your phone over the, the menu and get all these photos and recommendations and tips and things of that restaurant from That's very source from cool. a, it sounds really cool, right? Yeah. But then why aren't they mm. putting energy into making yeah. the restaurant yeah. part of Google Maps actually worth using yeah. so that people use it and post photos mm. and get ratings and, and give right. ratings. So yeah. that was really curious for me. I guess it's also because, I mean, Google is really good at like getting all that, you know, almost like 
data that can actually be collected by machines. But when it, it comes to the enjoyment of a restaurant, that's you can't just send a robot to yeah. a restaurant and like, like, that you actually re have to rely on users giving you that information. Yeah. And I, I mean, I personally use Google Maps as a utility to get around. Yeah. But I don't necessarily see it as a community thing where no. I, I actually enjoy giving reviews on stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and do you trust, yeah. like, I don't trust the Google reviews. Uh, I never no, trust them. No, me too. Yeah. Mm. That's the other thing is that um, the Google Maps ratings of places are always way higher yeah. than, than Foursquare, always. for example, yeah. because mm. uh, I don't know why, actually, but I trust Foursquare so much more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is also cool, like, mm. you can draw in Foursquare and say, okay, I just want to have dinner <clears throat> by the river mm. so show me the places by that's the river cool. it's that's so great. very cool that's actually yeah. really cool I yeah. didn't know that yeah I don't use it that much but it's really cool mm. <laughs> it's I can draw in my app um, yeah did you have anything else about Google Maps um, I don't know no not really I mean I think what Google Maps like I use Google Maps pretty often when I'm going to um, some place in the city I've never been before because Google Maps is really good at telling you the best and most efficient way to get there um, and I guess that's where Google is really, really good because, I mean, they can, you know, like actually make the calculations and everything and uh, with machine learning and all of that stuff, it's actually really easy for them to give you that information quite reliably and also like up to date. So they will, they would also, also show you when like a train is coming late and uh, yeah, for that navigation sort of awesome. stuff, it's really, really yeah. good. Yeah, navigation, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, actually like looking at it, like this side by side is actually it's actually quite yeah. impressive because yeah. I, I I wasn't aware that it's that different that it makes that big yeah. of a difference. It's just so much information compared to Google. Um, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what's your next one? Dean? Oh, okay, great. So there's kind of a little bit related in a way as well. There's a link. Um, everyone knows mm. this app, Airbnb. <laughs> it's great it's i would great there's yeah. no other competitor that i would ever it that i'm really mm. that's competing with it for me i'm going to use airbnb every time i travel and need to stay somewhere yeah so generally mm. amazing um but what i wanted to point out was when you want to really choose a place there are some things that for me is it just missing that it's, it makes it a, really a bit more annoying to have to pick pick the final place so for example if I want to go to San Francisco with three friends or three colleagues, colleagues yeah. <laughs> um, then I'm kind of doing this search. Actually, we were saying already today that it's a little like, okay, so it looks like clunky. Yeah. it's a bit clunky now. There seems to be a lot of newer stuff that make it harder to just go, show me the places. Yeah. So I think it's this one. And then I get this more kind of stuff. And then it took me actually a while before <laughs> to figure out that there's actually this little location pin at the bottom. That's yeah. the map. The map option. which is what you want that's, that's what i want yeah. yeah i want to see where the places yeah. are and pick my place yeah so now i've got <clears throat> this map of places but now what i do and i'd love to know if other people do this too is every single time i'm gonna stay anywhere new i'm looking at all these places i've got my filtered search i'm like okay there's this one here there's this one here maybe there's this one over here actually this is kind of a cool area maybe i want to stay there even though it's a bit further away so i'm thinking where do I want to be? Where do I need? Well, I'm going to San Francisco for work. We're going to work mm. at a particular office space when we're there. Maybe it's like over on this side of town, yeah. but uh, these places might be not so nice to stay in. And I love this area, mm. the Castro in San Francisco. Yeah. So how easy is it going to be for me to get from this place that I really like over to every day to this mm. office where I need to work at? So then, I always, usually maybe I'm actually on my um, laptop computer, when I'm, but it's exactly the same. Then I'm going back to my old Google Maps to say, no, I've got to type this in, to say San Francisco. And then it kind of gives me, hopefully, oh, it did before, gave me the Areas? Um, public transport and stuff. Or I would go, okay, where is this? place that I really liked, which one was it? This one. So I want to get to from like Buena Vista Park to let's just say I'm going to this <laughs> Transamerica Pyramid and I'm going to work there. So then I go into Google Maps and I type in like, yeah. oh, this place and I, how long does it take mm. me to get over here? What will the public transport be like? How long might an Uber take? Yeah. Oh no, that's too much hassle. Okay. So maybe I'm going to pick one of these uh, other places closer to 
to my location. But then there's a second thing that I really want to do when I'm choosing the place as well. And that is going back over to my old Foursquare. <laughs> and I don't want to stay in a place, maybe it's close to the office, um, but it's super boring area and there's not going to be any uh, restaurants and cafes and places to go. So then I'm looking for places in San Francisco and yeah. going, okay, no, I don't want to stay in that area because there's no, yeah. maybe I need to search again. There's no cool places. Maybe I want to stay somewhere over here. Mm. Yeah. So then I'm going back. Yeah. So basically my point is what I would love is if Airbnb would somehow put this, like show me the, show me the, where the cafes are, show me where the restaurants are, show me where the mm. so my are. So my question there would be, I wonder if that is like a, you know, the super user right is yeah. that is that the usual that people are really looking yeah. for a yeah. place that's like full yeah. with restaurants and that's close to this yeah. one specific spot or is that because we are yeah special you know users I, that, I, yeah. I think uh, my hunch is that this is probably really relevant for business like people who yeah. are traveling for business because usually like like I would do research before I go on a vacation and already know okay I want to see this and this and this and this is a cool area but especially if you're just going for one or two days yeah. you don't have a lot of time so maybe you just want to maximize the free time you have by finding like the cool spots that yeah. are still close to wherever you're working and I think that could be such a cool yeah. feature yeah. to just have like okay you want to be here but if you stay here you can yeah. actually get there just as fast yeah. with I don't know the light rail or something like yeah. that and there's yeah. like a lot exactly. more cool stuff happening there that would be so great for business trips yeah it, yeah. Would be great. it could yeah. be also like sometimes you travel to, to visit a friend mm. and you maybe stay and you want to get somewhere that's easy to get to your friend's yeah. place but yeah I think you're sure. right it's more for business travelers but I can imagine completely that it was it was several years ago now that Airbnb did um, make some changes to accommodate business travelers, like mm. like group bookings that someone else yeah. can book and other people can. Mm -hmm. So this seems like another yeah. uh, like a big big market for them, mm. a big potential yeah, thing. Sure. Yeah. That to make it super smooth yeah. would be good. But then they already have the market as well, yeah. so I don't know if it's worth. But Airbnb is getting more and more expensive as well, so I feel like yeah. it's more. It is becoming a little bit more geared towards the business traveler. Yeah, mm. you know what I mean. It's yeah. no. It, it isn't really for a budget traveler anymore. Yeah. because there's mm. so many extra TVs. fees, and actually the prices are quite high. Mm. Yeah, like they they used to be much more affordable. I feel like, but yeah. it's really kind of shifted. Mm. Yeah, so that's interesting. Could They've, be a. The whole thing's a bit more premium. They've got yeah. these premium experiences, and they've yeah. got this like yeah. plus. Uh, premium kind of homes and stuff now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Super interesting. Quick, before we uh, transition to Tim's uh, apps, um, we've been told in the comments that Yelp is yeah. uh, something that, you know, I mean, obviously we all know about Yelp, yeah. and apparently there's an AR feature of some sort. I don't know what that is. That Ooh. is, yeah, that sounds cool, right? <laughs> What's the note? Like, uh, like you can hold the it Fredo up. Fredo Films said Yelp used to have an, oh, used to have an AR feature. Okay, okay well, yeah. not anymore. I find Yelp just like, using it, mm. I just find it kind of ugly. <laughs> mm. And it makes me sad wanting, like, you know when a product is just like visually yeah. not nice, like mm. it actually deters yeah, yeah. me from using it. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, we're supposed to apologize yeah. for, yeah. Sorry about the audio issue, everybody. Callum's really sorry. And so are we, sorry. because we're a team. Is it still going? Is, <clears throat> is it? No, okay, cool. Yeah, sorry that there was the audio issue. That's really sad. Yeah. But anyway, that's why I don't use Yelp. I don't mm. know about you guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, Foursquare for me has just always been, uh, actually, nice, sir. yeah, it it's feels nicer to use. Everything seems to be a bit more laid out in the way that the things I usually want to see mm. first are, yeah. are there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, cool. Cool. All right, Tim. Yeah. Shall we Let's oh. switch the yeah. cable? Oh, we're switching yeah. the cable. Ooh. Okay, cool. Oh, it's not, we're not up on the thing, so it's okay. No one will see the switch. <laughs> Gosh, Great. this is high tech, high tech stuff. Okay, cool. Here. So the first thing uh, I want to talk about is a really small, um, but oh, yeah, uh, anyway, so I have to um, schedule calls with people from different time zones all, all the time. And it's quite annoying, especially when you're talking to someone and you actually have like like a distributed team of people who are not just in another time zone but they're actually like dispersed across different time zones so you might have like like we had a couple of weeks ago you might have one guy from San Francisco one guy from uh, Portugal and then another guy from New York and then you have us in Berlin so when you're talking to them to find like the perfect time when you can have like a catch up with them um, the the issue is that with like a normal 
um, you know, like a like a table to um, with like a what is that like the world times or yeah, what is yeah. that usually called? Uh, convert time. Yeah, converter. yeah, exactly. So yeah. that's that's usually you you have to do like some calculations in your head uh, if you're trying to juggle things around, especially mm. if some person says, yeah, actually, I can only do it like half an hour later, and then suddenly you're back to square one. So one <sighs> thing that I so this is a this is pretty much what this usually looks like. You just have um, the current time and the time in another time zone. But if I wanted to like quickly, you know, like check out like what is actually the time, like let's say we want to have a call nine in the evening here. So it's maybe in the morning for those guys. Mm. Is that still okay for the person in San Francisco? So that's going to be very tricky. Um, but then I found an app called Miranda and it's pretty, um, it's a pretty well designed app. I mean, what I really like about this is you can just like quickly add a new location here. Um, so you can see that I already have San Francisco uh, Boulder, Colorado, and New York in here. And what I really like about this is that you have this wheel here on the side where you can just change the time and then I can quickly see, okay, so nine in the morning for us, it's going to be 1 a.m. in Boulder, so that's not going to work out for them. So let's just like, it, it's just really mm, nice having it, having cool. it like side, side by side like that. And it's a really small utility, but I have used it so often already. And it's, um, yeah, it's just executed very nicely. For such a small app, I think I'm, al I'm always amazed when, you know, like one developer is creating something that is so useful and, and they actually put so much thought and care into it. Um, mm. It's just a joy to use, I think. I mean, there are so many little details that I really love about this. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so that's one thing I actually use weirdly often. Um, I mean, okay, like it, it, it doesn't have happen too often that we have like people from different time zones and, you know, like we have this, uh, uh, where we have these like scheduling conflicts, but, um, when it happens, then I'm so, I'm so happy to have this so app on my phone. It's super interesting yeah. because like in terms of like people are downloading mm. less and less apps mm. these days, right? Like mm. that's, it's harder and harder to get someone to actually download an app. But would you say that if like, let's say you were to create an app of some sort mm. of product. Um, would you maybe gear more to it? Because this seems like it's not something that's going to be like widespread. It's not mm. going to go, it's not going to be on everybody's yeah. phones. Like what's the, there's no real maybe growth strategy for it, mm. but maybe that's a really good thing. Like yeah. doing something super specific yeah. for a very small group yeah. of people yeah. um, could be kind of the way mm. to go. In yeah. Terms. Is this that's, paid as well? Did you pay I for it? I think I paid for it. I'm not entirely sure if it was like freemium. I yeah. mean, I, I mm. always, I prefer to pay, like I hate having ads in my apps. So, I don't know uh, what what the free and premium features would be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in this case, I think in this case, I'm not entirely sure. I don't remember. Um, yeah. I don't remember if it was like free, completely free, or if I paid for it. But I I think they might have had ads in there maybe yeah. in the beginning. But maybe I'm mixing mm. it up with another app. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but honestly, for a for an app like that, I would also just gladly pay. I mean, yeah. um, I I find that usually I would rather. I mean. When I see an app that is coming from a small developer and it's paid, then I immediately somehow trust it more. And I yeah. assume yeah. that, okay, this is a person who takes that product really seriously. They are asking money for it. So I can assume that they also keep developing it and, you know, mm -hmm. like adding, like make, you know, supporting the product, being available for, you know, answering questions. And in this case, I think it's definitely worth it, especially, I mean, the, the prices in the app store are not going to, you know, um, break the bank. Break the bank, exactly. <laughs> I mean, um, there are a couple of apps um, I'm going to show that are actually quite expensive for something on the App Store. But I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I, mm. I, tr I just trust like paid apps way more. And uh, yeah, really good question on this kind of like niche market thing. I mean, I, I, I think I agree. I mean, if you're a, s a smaller, you know, uh, product company or even just like a solo developer. I think just finding something, you know, like some niche that is kind of like underserved by, by, by other bigger players and just making the perfect product for that space is probably the way to go, especially with something like a, like a um, time conversion tool. It's, it, I think this is probably something that's quite easy to develop. Like just, it's not going to, you know, I mean, it's not reinventing the wheel. Like this app is not doing anything that, couldn't be done just by like calcul calculating mm. stuff in, yeah. in in your head, but it's just um, 
you know, geared towards a use case that I think a lot of other uh, of these uh, tools are ignoring. So I think mm -hmm. uh, that was some, like, the person who developed this had a really nice idea, I think. And yeah, he cool. executed it really, really well. Any, anytime, like, if you've just sent once an email to a client or someone with the wrong time calculation, oh. That's enough to be. I'm gonna pay yeah. for something. That yeah, and it. I mean there are like these little cool details. Like yeah. let's say let's say I want oh. to get really oh, granular wow. and do it by the minute. I mean it's yeah. just like no, it's so, cool. I, yeah. I I mean I, I don't it's know beautiful. like it's it's such such a cool thing to see like somebody like even like having so much like pride about like what they're putting out there instead of just you know a cash grab or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the thing about this that is kind of cool is that it's such a a lot of people would think about that and be like oh it's such a small yeah, yeah. problem you yeah. know yeah. but it's a really painful yeah problem. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. it's small and it happens like yeah. rarely but it's such a pain that it's actually worth having this app on your yeah. phone yeah it's really cool yeah, yeah. okay what's your next product okay, let's see um the next one i want to talk about is notion mm. <gasps> so i should um i know Brittany, <laughs> you're using this too i think um, i mean i should mention that usually i'm using this on my desktop i mean it's it's not the app i would like the mm. primary use case I think is not like doing it from your phone but I think it's still really really useful to have this yeah. so if you haven't heard um, about uh, Notion it's um, how would you describe it I mean it's it's just it's, it's somehow doing everything <laughs> Magic. And, it's uh, everything in it's in like one, an or yeah. I would say mostly it's like an organizational yeah. tool yeah. but yeah. for everything Exactly. It's it's like um, if you if you somehow combined a database tool with a to do app. Yeah. And note taking, uh, note -taking calendar, document. A yeah. Calendar. Yeah. Exactly. Like yep. uh, and and that sounds super horrible. Like that could easily yeah. be the the most complicated uh, overall tool yeah. imaginable. Yeah. But um, would some... you call it a project management? Tool yeah. Or... Yeah. You, I mean, you can you can definitely use it for that. I mean, I think that's probably yeah. like the most likely use case. But. Mm -hmm. um, um, what I really like about this is that it's extremely flexible um, and so you can customize it to your own needs. It can be as lean or as complicated as you need it to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it's also uh, allowing you to um, quickly create exactly what you need and have other people use it at the same time. So um, one thing that you can do, for example, is let's let's um let's see what's in here um so you're starting off with kind of like an empty you know like an empty slate and then you yeah. can just like turn it into whatever you want to do mm. so let's just say this is called uh live street or oh, love stream Ooh, <laughs> I love that's much better, much better than live stream. yeah okay okay live stream and um yeah i want to turn this into like a patreon I can, and then I can just add stuff here. Just it's it's, yeah. it's it's like you can create this. It, it's almost like a sandbox where you can create exactly what you need, and uh, you can kind of like nest different elements within yes. each other, which is really cool. And it's all drag and drop. Like it's super mm. easy to do. It's not like this tedious process where you have to you know like use building blocks. And I mean. I pretty much started using this as the CMS for my personal website because my personal website is super small. I don't really need it anyway. Um, and I used to run it on WordPress, which is already pretty simple, I would say. Um, but this is even easier and you can just... Um, so you're, you're ma you've made a page yeah. that's like your website and you're just directing people to that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you that's can... <clears throat> let's what see. Um, you can just get the URL for whatever yeah. you create and yeah, yeah. in my case i just put like i just forwarded my uh, personal email uh, url to that thing yeah right. and it's so much easier for me to update things um it's i don't know why the, there's why no front everyone isn't doing over it. like front end uh no there, there there is basically no separation between front end and back end i mean everything yeah. that like if I invited you to this page you would see exactly what I was working about yeah I mean this is actually maybe the the, the one shortcoming that I see um, that you know dealing with permissions is a bit I mean that 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 feels still a little bit weak to me mm -hmm. I mean yeah. this is something that maybe like a tool like Jira would probably do a bit better like this is probably more for you know like power users from bigger uh, you know like from bigger teams who actually have to manage permissions like on a very granular yeah. level mm -hmm. so if I created like let's actually s take a look at um, let's see the product team Kanban 
hope nothing's <laughs> uh, super contentious <laughs> on Uh-oh. here. Oh, the crisis. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, I, I can invite people to this, uh, yeah. but I can't really tell them what they can and they can't yeah. do. Like, I, right. like uh, for example, I mean, oh, the, like the idea yeah. for the Kanban, for example, is that people can only pretty much add stuff to this thing here, um, but I can't actually I define that anywhere. Okay. So either I just give them permission to just view it or mm-hmm. edit it completely. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, maybe, but may, I mean, I'm quite new to this tool as well. So maybe I just didn't find that function yet. Mm-hmm. Um, right, yeah. But honestly, this like this uh, product pretty much uh, turned into like I'm using the this for everything now. Yeah, just me because too. it's so powerful. Like yeah. your to do list. Yeah, like yeah. For, calendar. Yeah. Like yeah. I have, I even like everything like I don't use my notes anymore my uh, notes app like yeah. I just use notion because you can put a note inside of a like a you can have like a project and then put a note inside of there and then have other things and everything's in the same place yeah and it's just like one tool for yeah. everything what about I have a question because mm-hmm. I've used like Jira and Confluence and these other wiki tools and we're using a different one now here at AJ and Smart for our kind of internal yeah. documentation yeah this what's the problem called where things don't get uh, things get out of date quickly and then you have this bloat of information and you're not sure which is up to date and which is not maybe you've just started using it too recently Mm. how long have you been using it um maybe maybe uh eight weeks or something Uh like that yeah yeah but i've only started using it like like seriously like maybe for like four weeks yeah just like trying actually that that was actually uh something that fedor found for me for a sprint as a lightning demo oh yeah so um then i started like trying things out and then i was like oh that's actually quite cool you can embed everything you can actually i think you can also like upload figma files in it you can you can embed youtube videos or videos from um yeah the other one vimeo um and it's just like it's so that's the one thing that i think a lot of people are talking about is maybe it's too robust Mm -hmm. Mm. but if you figure out a way to use it that works for you i think that that's it's pretty there's nothing really better out there that i can ask another question do we have time are we going okay yeah go ahead how like now with you guys telling me about this Mm -hmm. i'm thinking maybe i should just never use google docs ever again maybe this will be my new thing what would be would there be anything missing if i would just is there real time i don't think there's real time time there is oh there is okay Cool. Yeah, one of our clients actually used um, Notion exclusively. Like, they only used Notion for yeah. everything. Like, they had tons of documents in there. I could actually see people going through the documents and typing stuff up. Yeah. So it is very similar to Google Docs in that regard. Because um, you can't embed YouTube, YouTube videos inside of Google, can you? And Figma files. Um, and... No. Spreadsheet. Fig- definitely not Figma files, no. right? Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, yeah. What about, uh, oh. what's, have you ever used Evernote, either of you guys? No, I, actually. Yeah, I tried, I tried to get into it a couple of years ago, but I somehow could never, yeah. I don't know. It was, I, I don't know why, because I know people who, who, love, who it. love it and they, you know, they're such big fans, but somehow it never really struck a chord with me. Yeah, I it's know. I never seems, really got I, I, I have no idea why, because I know it's a really cool product. It's, it's, yeah, it just feels like almost like a little bit too heavy for some reason. For just simple, mm. you know, like, you know, like collecting these, these scraps of things that you need later need to use again. It just feels somehow a little bit too... Um, like it's uh, too powerful in a way right. yeah. for what I need. Because usually when I need to take yeah. notes, I'll just actually like write it down on a post-it. And if I need to keep it yeah. for some reason, I'll take a photo of it and then put yeah. it in my Dropbox and that's, that's yeah. it. I use Simple Note. Shout out if anyone else does. It's the simplest note-taking thing ever. You're kidding, Dee. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just like everything that, like you just said, Tim, if mm. there's a thought, it just goes in there. And it, it never gets bloated because it just yeah. it just scrolls like I keep adding new notes and they just they just disappear Mm. from my mind after I don't need them anymore but as soon as I think oh where was that shopping thing that I need before I type shopping oh it's there and it just has the most powerful search and the simplest Mm. interface that's cool I've used it for years now like Mm. I don't know how many years seven years simple note I just asked in the comments if anybody uses it so we'll see um simple note yep somebody uses it yeah one person no Yay. there might be more there might be more yeah it? okay it? it's Joy uh, Deep. Joy Deep. Yes. yes um okay tim mm-hmm. next up cool um next up is uh, a camera app called uh, hey light mm. um 
This is again a case where a very small team created something that is so incredibly polished and nice. So Halite, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's, it's um, essentially giving your phone almost the powers of a uh, digital SLR. Just make it put it on something more interesting. Um, yeah, actually, let's. Oh. See. <laughs> <laughs> so ah, there we go. No, but I said more. I said more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. So, so um, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, if you are if you are like me, you'll use your phone as a camera almost every day. Um, yeah. I mean, I used to be pretty big into photography, like with <laughs> like actual cameras, and uh, yeah. So uh, hey, everyone, that's not awkward at all. <laughs> okay. um, so, so what does it but do? since I had since I got my first no. iPhone, I'm actually using my iPhone way more just because I have it on me all the time. And the camera is actually really, really good for just a point and shoot. And um, the, the, the one thing that is maybe a bit annoying with the iPhone is that the camera is almost doing a little bit too much for you. So the, the photos will always be OK. But especially when you're like shooting in like difficult light situations, like it's a nice, um, you know, like the sun is going down, the sky looks really awesome. Yeah. You just can't capture it because the, the camera will kind of like um, almost uh, yeah, it will, it will kind of just like not get what you actually want to shoot. So yeah. um, the nice thing about Halite is that it gives you, um, yeah, essentially camera control. So you can actually like change the focus mm. of the lens, which is something uh. that you that the normal iPhone camera, oh, like the built in camera great. doesn't do. Um, you can also uh, it's cool that it can like yeah, like Change, it, yeah. Yeah, like it uses yeah. the iPhone camera, but it's yeah. that's yeah. interesting. I think it's even more powerful on the iPhone 10 just because yeah. the camera is even even better than on this one. But mm -hmm. um uh, then, something like Oh yeah, 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 cool. So um again this is uh, a really very thoughtful interface. Um it does a lot of things, but it's somehow very um like like I can even focus on that smudge <laughs> <laughs> So it's really great. Um <laughs> So another thing that I can do is I can actually export photos as uh, a raw file. So mm -hmm. instead of a JPEG, oh, wow. cool. <clears throat> and that's actually pretty, pretty, makes a pretty big difference because in the end, um, I, if, if you guys don't know, if you are shooting with a normal iPhone camera, it's usually just saved as a JPEG or some weird new format. Uh, I don't I don't know what the new format the, is. Anyway, it's a, yeah, something oh, yeah, like right, that. Yeah. In, in any case, when you try to um, edit the photos later on your computer, you can't really do too much with it because a lot of information got lost. So here you can actually save photos as a raw file, just as if you took it from a digital SLR and you can do a lot more stuff with it in the end. Um, yeah. And uh, do, do, you can actually fix a lot of problems later on on your computer when you're editing. And I think um, like there are so many nice little flourish, put it flourishes on, put it on in us here as well. Too. Yeah, um, flourish, flourish us. Okay, okay, let's see. Um, let's look. <laughs> So um, I'm just going to put this on autofocus, or actually, let me just try. Okay, this is. Oh. Uh. Okay, this is great. Um, <laughs> let me. So I. Tim is such a good photographer. Keep yeah. working. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Great. Okay. So cool. So um, yeah, no, we have taken a bunch of photos good. here, and due oh, to so actually. so you can so you can see here that actually um <laughs> the light is like it's what is it like blown out here just yeah. because yeah. it's too bright outside yeah. this is now something that i could actually fix in photoshop way easier yeah that's um, cool. right yeah and uh one more thing i want to um i want to show you guys is that uh let's see how do we actually get back now yeah. to the <laughs> okay so this is i mean there's okay. so many photo apps Right, yeah. like so many of them. How did you find this one and why did you yeah, choose this one? Right. Um, this one was actually recommended to me by our colleague Amr, who oh, okay. uses yeah. it all the time. He's also taking a lot of photos with his phone. And yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. They're also doing a really good job, I think, uh, presenting how they present themselves. Because again, this is actually an example of um, a very niche product that is doing one thing that n no other product is doing yeah. and doing it really, really, really well. And yeah. um, there is a lot of like polish and thought like they and care they put into this app as well. I think the price is uh, premium for uh, for an iPhone app. I think it's something like six ninety nine or something. So that's actually extremely expensive. Yeah. Um, but easily worth it. I mm. mean, um, 
this is again one of these cases where I would rather pay to support developers who really care, who put a lot of work into that and um, also use that money to put put out more interesting products mm. as well. So I think that's a good <clears throat> yeah. point because some people, like I think most people in the app store would never pay yeah. $6.99 yeah. for that. But like mo I'm talking about most people. Mm. But then if you think about the kinds of people that are going to want to use that kind of product, yeah. they would pay. And I yeah. think that's the difference, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it depends but, on what yeah. your product's doing. Yeah, I think you can actually make a, a lot of money from people who are interested in a niche product because yeah. they would, they, I don't know, let's say I came up with it the best app for people who are into fly fishing or something like that. Yeah. Uh, not that I know anything about that, but <laughs> it's a... Uh, Hot uh, tip, fly yeah, fishing. <laughs> yeah, get, get into fly fishing, exactly. <laughs> no, but I mean, um, if, if be, be, because what these people need is so specific that if you, if you are familiar with that market and you can create something that is perfect for these people, if you ask them to pay $5, five for an app like that, I think if it's useful for them, they will do that way more likely than if you try mm. to create, you know, like a, a new Flappy Bird clone and then you're trying to make yeah. money by putting ads in it. Yeah, and totally. I mean, that's that's also, I guess, a valid strategy. But it, yeah, I mean, I think the difference is that on the one hand, you have users who actually care about what you created. They paid money for it and they will actually become this really engaged community. So they will also tell you what they want next. And on the other hand, you have like this very uh, kind of like yeah, cheap and easy cash grab yeah. where you're just like hoping that one of these like little things somehow sticks and maybe becomes like this viral hit or something like Flappy mm. Bird. But um, yeah. I mean, where is Flappy Bird now? Like, cares <laughs> where is where Flappy Bird I mean, I think the now? guy got really rich from it. So more yeah, he's him, probably doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought of something that's more for physical, like discovering or find this, this whole problem of maybe you want a phone a better camera app for your phone or yeah. maybe you, you really want a solution to a problem but there's so many apps mm. how do you know where to start or do you ask people do you just like go through the top mm. list on the, the app stores yeah. there's this great um site that maybe a lot of people know i think you use it as well but it's more for physical products like when i wanted to buy new headphones i looked there when i wanted to buy a new hair straightener mm. i oh, looked cool. there what the wire that? cutter mm. you use that as well the wire yeah, yeah 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 all the time yeah Cool. Uh, and I don't know if it has digital products as well. Oh. That would be very interesting. But it's great. Yeah, they have they apps. They have apps too. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I've, got to, I've got to remind myself yeah. to go back there. But if really, if you just need like a toaster or yeah. uh, the um, home, like a home mm. audio system, they've just reviewed all of the top <laughs> ones and really used them, mm. not just reviewed them on the surface, but really yeah. used them for like three months reviewed them and rated them and yeah. given you a big breakdown of oh, okay so it's consent. not it's not a community uh no, no. Site. no. it's like it's okay. real Discourse people who, oh, and like this is so number one better. for the price yeah. and this is number one for yeah. the cheap yeah. Yeah. options and stuff like that great. it's fantastic great. the record is really great i think yeah. they got uh, acquired by the new york times now. oh really oh. So, yeah yeah interesting Good for them. Yeah. okay quick question for you tim about that product which yeah. is what is it called again uh halide halide um can you do it for video? Is it for video as well? Or is it just photos? No, it's only for photos. Only photos. Yeah. And then yeah. the second question is, um, when it comes to like saving raw files on your yeah. phone, yeah. how is that for memory? Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. So, okay. um, so the, the way they market this app is also interesting. I mean, they're saying this is for people who are interested in photography. So it's it's definitely not something you would do for just a quick snapshot of, you know, like some something you right. want to remember. Yeah. It's more if you see something really nice and you actually want to do something with it later, um, then you would use that because it's it's true. Raw files are really gigantic compared to JPEG. So, um, yeah, like when I started using Halite, I went a bit overboard. And then like after one day, my phone's memory was mm. completely packed with photos. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah it's, it's something you have to be aware of for sure. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to look at zero? Uh, do we have time? I mean, we definitely have been going for 45 minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe, that's, then maybe that's not going we'll, to We'll save a few apps for next time. Yeah, I think exactly. that's important. Um, but thank you guys so much, um, whoever watched. It seemed like there Yay. were quite a few people popping in and out. Um, obviously, this is all, if you missed the first part, it's going to be available online afterwards. Um, and thanks for all your comments and questions. And thanks, Dee and Tim, thanks, for bringing Brittany. your products to the table. Thanks, everyone. Um, and if you guys liked this, kind of video, this kind of live stream where we're actually looking at products, talking about them, um, let us know because then we'll keep doing it um, if it's something that you're interested in. Cool. Thanks. 
Bye. Bye. Oh, Bye. like and subscribe. Should I say that? Okay. <laughs> <Charles> says, <yes. laughs> like and subscribe. We love you. Bye. Like and subscribe.